Hello everyone, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. Um, I just wanted to make a video um, showing you how I do my cats, how I cut them out, and how I draw them and make them cats out of forks. All right, let me, it's only me as the cameraman today, so bear with me. Um, let me get you set up. So the first thing I do is I take my pen, let's see if I got a smaller one, nope, all my tiny little sharpies are gone. Alright, so let's get these guys laid out, top side up. We're gonna draw a couple cats and I'll cut out one and get one finished for you so the video is not too long. Um, but I like to do my cats on the forks that have the hips, I call them, the squared off. They're not rounded. Because I can take and make the ears. I can drop down off of this one, right over here, come up here, burn it right down. So I've done this a couple times, so it's a little bit easy for me to kind of get through them. I want to make sure that I leave enough room up here for my hole, because I've put a hole up there and that's how I hang them. Um, I have seen people run it up longer and then make the loop over. Um, I haven't tried that yet, but this way I'm still keeping, I'm keeping the cats kind of light. And the other thing I do is I take and proportion it and you kind of see how big the legs are getting. I don't want to leave this all on there. So I'll go right about, make sure I'm in the frame. Right about there looks good for this guy. And I'm just gonna run my marker across the back and that gives me my lines to cut the legs. So I've got two ears, I've got enough room for my mouth and, and I also do whiskers on them. And I'll do some stripes. And then I'll punch out my hole, my hole right there. And so for the round ones, and see this fork tine or, or this uh, gap goes up a little bit higher than these two. So for these guys, I like to make a little hump. So I'll start the ears up here and then I'll arch the back. And this guy here is going to come all the way up because it's kind of short. And if you don't like it, just erase it and start over again. Make this a little fat cat. I don't want to go that low. I like that line better. I'll take that down there. I, I, mouth, whisker, whisker, beep, beep. Now I got an arched cat. So kind of doing the same thing here. Run them up. And every fork is different. So every time I start to make a cut, kind of gives me a little bit different shape. I just try and follow the fork, see what the fork will allow me to do. Proportion is a big, 
is a big thing with the cats and the dogs. Because if it looks weird or it doesn't look proportionate, it uh, kind of makes the cats not very appealing. So this guy will take his ear up a little bit. There we go. Uh, let's see. This guy, see I have this point right here. I'm gonna take that and make that an ear. And take this guy straight back. And last one, this guy's a little fork. And you wanna make sure that you have enough meat on the tail, like I said, to be able to get your jump ring in there. He looks kind of wonky. Let's get that line to go straight back. There we go. That looks better. Okay, so we have our cats. We're going to do this one. So let me get you set up over here. And I just use this one by two, I think it is. One by one. Yeah, it's one and a quarter by three quarters. It was this scrap I had laying around. I cut my own angle on it cut out a channel and I have, I have a block that I can use in my vise. Alright, and I generally work at an angle. Let me get this guy flat. So I'm just looking to get the body flat against here so it's not pinching up or down because it's going to drag off your blade or you're going to pop a bunch of blades. Um, I just have this cheap, I think I got it for eight or nine dollars on eBay. It just has the crimps here. And when it, what I do is I'll put pressure on it, put my blade in there. I just put a little bit of pressure. And that gets me nice and tight. I also have my wax. This is just beeswax. Um, I got it at a show from, from a person who had bees. Um, they actually sent it to me a couple days after the show. So I always start with the ear and I try and just make one path. Let me see if I can. Okay. All right, so here we go. This is a number three blade. And it generally doesn't take too long to cut one of these out. They're a lot easier than the dogs. 
And I'm just barely holding this, basically with my pinky and my, my thumb. Once I start feeling it not really grabbing, I'll give it a little bit of wax. Okay, I'll make my turn. If it starts to bind up on you, just kind of lift up on it and let the piece recenter itself. <sighs> Another thing I've done before too is have a little paintbrush. Just keep it here so I can brush away and get my line, be able to see my line. And this is a silver plated fork. Depending on what you get for a base metal, depends on how easy it is to cut. So I'm higher, almost higher than my other ear. Puts me about the right height. So now I'm gonna start to make my turn again. I want it to be as straight as I can get it. So I'm kind of pulling the blade back and turning at the same time. can fix it whenever we hit it with the Dremel. Okay. Now we're moving again. So the lines are basically a guide. Everyone that comes out, I kind of go by the proportion, not proportion, well, I guess proportion. I want to make them look even, and I don't want to have to do too much with the uh, with the Dremel. All right, so let's go a little bit farther down. to have enough room to have the face in here. So, wax up, start ready, start going for a turn. So you can feel it not cutting. So make sure I put on my wax and then I can feel it taking bits out again. When I first started making these, I did it all with a hacksaw and um, I used a sawzall for a little bit. That was fun and reckless. <laughs> this way it takes a little bit longer, but there's also a lot less work to do afterward with, as far as cleanup goes. Almost. 
to our tail. gap in here is pretty big, so I'm going to trim it down a little bit. Make it a little bit longer. Should be good. Alright, so we'll wax up, start making our turn. Come on, you can do it. Some of the blades I got weren't very good, so I've just been using them all up. Some are super sharp. Some you just have to fight with. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to keep a good size um, piece for the tail. Try and keep it uniform. Just as I start going up. I haven't found a use yet for the negative after I cut the cat out. The piece that's left over. But normally I'll take this piece here and I'll turn it into a pair of earrings. If I have another cat that's the same pattern. And I was going through my videos the other day, trying to think of more videos to do and still make stuff that I need for my next show. And I was just sitting here thinking, I only have two cats left. So all my bird houses, all my bird roofs, and a couple other pieces are in the tumbler. Figured I'd make a video real quick of how I cut out the cats. And for everyone who's cringing, I haven't had any classes or anything. This is just, I saw one or two little videos and the rest is just trial and error so far. I finally stopped breaking so many blades. Started letting the, the saw do the work. I'm not trying to force it through. This is the longest cut. <laughs> So I'm getting close to the end. I want to make sure that I have enough room to put in the hole for my 1 16th. So 
size bit. Sometimes if it's uh, too small, I'll take a hammer and I'll flatten it out a little bit to kind of give me a little bit more space. The other part about doing the tails this way is I get part of the handle so it still, it still looks like it was a fork at the top besides the legs. You still know that it's fork. I always try and get two wows. Wow, that's really cool or that's really pretty. And then you tell them it was a fork or a spoon. You get, wow! Day, I will get a better saw but for now this one's working fine okay, we're making our turn So there we have our rough cat. So zoom out a little bit so you can see the Dremel process. So, so I have this Dremel and then I have my, my big rotary tool that hangs from the ceiling. Um, I think I can do most of it with this guy. Um, let's see. Mark this down to a four. Okay. So what I'm doing now, actually, first off, I need to get the ears right. For this I use a triangle file and I'll go right inside the ears. Just want this to be a nice, nice even shape. This guy put away. All right, so what I'm going to do is just take kind of take these burrs off, and as I go, I'm just going to clean up I'm going to clean up those rough edges. You see the, the uh, saw marks as I'm going around, I'm cleaning up those edges, and I'm going to make them as shiny and smooth as I can. And then afterwards, we'll go around and we'll take the edges off both sides and we'll round off this tail. So that's what we're doing now is we're taking and dremeling these out. We'll go with a little smaller bit. And these are just diamond bits. I think I get 30 of them for 
three or four or five bucks on eBay. I'm using it to, I'm moving it to where I can see, reflect the light off of it. So I can see the shiny parts and the parts that still need filed down. Now we're going to take off this edge. You want to be careful here because your bit can just zip right off of that edge. So make sure you have enough, enough room on there. So that if you do pop off, you're not going to pop off and scratch your animal. We're doing the same thing to this side, taking off that, that little burr. So let's switch this over to my sanding drum. I'll put this onto my 180 grit. And I'm going to do the same thing except I'm going to try and clean up the pointy parts. Try and get everything to blend together. First, I'm going to take and just uh, buff this off. Without all that on there, I can see what's actually there. Alright, so I have 
no sharp edges left. So it looks okay. Oh, I got a sharp edge back here. off of there. All right, now we're going to punch. We're gonna punch the hole for our tail. I've got my 3 16 bit in the vise, or one sixteenth, sorry. Wax it up a little bit. Now you have this burr on the back. Just using the tip. I'll smooth that out both sides. And I have another Dremel that has a 1 16th diamond bit and I use that just to make sure that the holes straight and that everything's gonna do what I want it to do all right so next we have to put on our face so I want my little eye little eye mouth Nose, whisker, 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 whisker. And then we'll do a stripe here, we'll do a stripe here, a little tiny stripe, a stripe up there. Let's do a couple of stripes on the tail. All right, and with my block here, I mark the legs. It's in there. So proportion it again. I want them to be right there. There we go. Put this back in here. All right, so how I do this is I use, where's my tiny guy? I use this little guy. It's just a little small tapered diamond bit. And I use my punch. I use my punch. And here's the diamond bit. I'm not sure if you saw that. It's just so it's not straight, it's more of a triangle, but it's pretty close. So we're gonna take give this little guy some eyes and a nose so my eyes I make pretty deep and then my nose will just be a small little tap that in there. I want to actually take and use this guy first. 
This one has a squared tip. It's more, it's uh, not sharp, but it gives me a crisper edge. So that's my space. All right. So I'm gonna give this guy a mouth. Couple whiskers here. Now we'll start on our stripes. And I want to make sure that these are kind of deep because they're going to hold um, what we're going to use to darken it. And then over time, they'll also uh, darken naturally. But I want them to be nice and deep on here. You just do any little zigzags. And we'll put a stripe coming down this way too. So, we've got our stripes, we've got everything put in place. Let's get this guy's leg cut off, legs cut off. No cats were actually harmed in the making of this video. Got our line. Can you see that? We've got our line for our legs. These are 14 inch bolt cutters. Okay, now I'll just take these guys. Pop them off of there. Put them in a baggie, and they will become earrings or chimes for the bells. Um, we have tons of uses for them, so these are kind of longer times. I'll put them in my long time container. Take this over to our sander. sander I got from Harbor Freight. This time I'm going to take my sanding drum again and we're going to go over the feet. Let's 
start at the top and I just go around just using the tip to take off that hard burr that's on the edge. We want to take any imperfections that were left by the bolt cutters. Most of those should have been gone already, but we still have a few left here. Yeah, that looks pretty clean. And then we'll go alongside all of them. Just make sure there's no sharp spots. pretty good to me. So next I'm going to take my big marker or you can take a liver of sulfur and dip this in it or paint it on to get uh, color in your lines. Um, what I do though is I take, I got these Lowe's Never Stop Improving markers. They were on clearance for like a dollar because they leak a lot but there's also a ton of ink in them. So what I do is I'll color in the eyes. I'm basically just using this for the ink that's in it. The ink is gonna be basically our base because once we polish this with the rouge, the rouge is gonna get stuck in there and that's going to create another layer. And then over time, it's going to um, oxidize as well. So let's see if I can get you over here. This is my buffer. These both came from Lowe's. You see both? Yep. This is a yellow one. It's pretty stiff. I used a black compound on that. It's way too much for um, what we're doing with the silverware because it's meant for more stainless and hard metals like that. Um, So now we're going to take, we're going to clean off these edges and we're going to take this off. So I like my fiber wheel for taking off um, the hard edges. What a, this just goes right up my spindle. Take this off. Now we have room to move.
old t-shirt here. And I'll wipe this guy off. And there we have a little cat. Smiley face, whiskers, eyes, and a spot for a jump ring up here. I'll sign the back and we'll be able to put charms or little crystals, lots of little things hanging off the tail here. And it's nice and light. One cut. Let's see if I can do this. And there's your cat. I was thinking about trying and doing earrings as this, as the negatives of the cat, but we'll have to see. Everyone's different. But I was also thinking about saving these, this whole piece, to give to the new owner who has this cat. So they can say it came from a fort. But I don't know if people would like that. Uh, let me know in the comments. All right, there's a little tabby cat. I'm Jeremy from Flatware Creations, and I hope everyone has a great day.